Welcome, everyone. For today's prep, we're going to start to look at the idea of compound interest. So this is going to be another application of exponential functions. And to start, I want to start with a few definitions and actually first a quote that I particularly like by Albert Einstein. So he said, the most powerful force in the universe, universe is compound interest. And we'll see why. All right, so our motivating example here. We're going to be depositing money into a savings account, and then we're not going to make any additional deposits or withdrawals. So we're just going to let the money sit there that we put in. And the thing with a savings account at a bank is the bank just doesn't let the money sit there. It actually uses it, so it loans it out to other customers. And so for the privilege of using the money that you've deposited, the bank makes interest payments into your account at stated intervals. So principal is the original amount of money that we deposit. Interest is are the payments that we get from the bank for having our money deposited. The interest period is the interval of time between interest period interest payments. So this is a, some common ones is there might be quarterly, so every three months, monthly, so every you know every month, things like this. And where the magic happens is with the idea of compound interest. So this is interest that is added our, in, into our account and then from then on starts to earn its own interest. So it starts building on itself. And we're going to see a little example here. We're going to start with this just to kind of get a picture of what this compound interest kind of looks like. So let's start with an easy example. Suppose we deposit $1,000 into a savings account and the terms of our account state that the bank is going to pay us interest at a rate of 6% per annum. So they're going to pay us a yearly interest rate of 6%. And it's compounded yearly. So compounded yearly means they're going to be putting that money into our account at the end of each year. All right, so the question is, how much money is going to be in our, be in our account after two years? So let's kind of picture this. Let's picture our savings account as a bucket. All right, so there we've got our savings account and let's visualize our starting uh, principle here, how much money we put in. And let's make that, yeah, we'll make it green. All right, so there is, there is our principle. That's our initial deposit. So we're filling it up. So we got $1,000 sitting in there. All right. So the idea is we're going to see what happens to our savings account after year one and then after year two. So let's kind of draw a few of those. And I'm just going to copy, <laughs> make this easy. So there's year two, and there's year one. All right, so let's say this is year zero. Then we've got our year one bank account, and then our year two bank account. And we're going to see what happens. All right, so let's see how much money we're going to have in our account at the end of year one. So again, we put in $1,000. We're not touching that. So that's going to still be in our account. So what happens is because we left this money in our account, the bank is going to pay us interest. So they're going to make a, you know, it's not going to be huge, but a little deposit at the end of year one into our account. So this is our interest payment. So how much is that going to be? Well, to figure out how much that interest payment's going to be, we take our balance, the amount of money that we have that's going to be earning interest for that year, and multiply it by 6%. So 1,000 times 0 0.06, we're going to use a decimal, is going to be $60. So this interest payment, again, it's not huge, it's going to be $60. So the way we figure this out is we have our 
balance from the previous year, which was $1,000, but now we're adding to that 1,000 times 0 0.06. So this was our previous year's balance, and this is the interest payment that we're getting. So if we calculate this out, this ends up being $1,060. So that's how much money is going to be in our account after year one. Okay, so again, we're not touching it. We're going to let it sit there. So in year two, we're starting with $1,060. So that same amount from before, we're letting it sit there. So just to indicate that it sat there for, for a full year, this interest payment that we got I'm going to color it in green. So it's it's sitting there for a full year. So this is how much money we're starting with now. We're starting with a little bit extra, 1060 Okay. Well, now we let all of this sit, so the bank is going to pay us interest. So what happens? Well, we still have that kind of original $1,000 that we put in, so that's going to earn kind of the same sliver of interest payment. So let's... Uh, Kind of draw that in here. Oops. So that's still that same 60 bucks. But now, and this is where the magic starts to happen. But now, that little extra bit that we had sitting there at the end of year one, that's going to, we're not touching it, so it's sitting there for an, addition, an additional year. So that's going to earn its own interest. So again, it's not going to be huge, but it's going to be something. So we had our 1060 from before, and now our principal earned that same 60 bucks, but now this little interest payment from year one, well, now that's earning a little bit extra. So what we end up with is we had the, the 1060 from that was sitting in our account, and we end up with the 1,000 times 0 0.06. So that was the interest payment on kind of that original $1,000. So that's what we're seeing there. But how much is this going to be? Well, that's going to be our $60. So $60, we let sit, times 0 0.06. And if we uh, do the arithmetic there, this is going to be 60 bucks, and this is going to be, oh, about... Uh, 360. <laughs> so if we if we add it all up, this print or the the amount of money at the end of year two is going to be 100 or 1,123 dollars and 60 cents. So. Year zero, we started with 1,000. Year one, we ended up with 1,060. And year two, we're ending up at 1,123.6. So this is the compound interest that we're seeing. We had an interest payment from before that earned its own interest. And the idea here, it doesn't seem like much. You know, that's not much extra here for just one year. It's only $3.60, so it's nothing too crazy. But over time, these little compound interest payments really start to accumulate. And over the course of a year or two, you're not going to notice the difference um, because they're, we're going to see they're related to exponential functions. Um, but over time, exponential functions grow really big. All right, so let's kind of look at this a little more formally here. So for discrete compounding, we have a formula that tells us what our account balance should be. 
So A here is our account balance, so it's the account value after T years. P is our principal amount, and then we're multiplying that principal amount by this, well, it's going to be an exponential term. Um, and we'll see how this ultimately we're going to get to the our natural exponential function. But what this is, it's 1 plus R over M times M raised to the power T. So the R here, this is our interest rate per annum. So this is, and when we do this, we're going to write R as a decimal. Just like we did. So in our example, we were doing 6%. We were writing that as 0 0.06. M is the number of interest periods per year. So in our example, we were only compound, we were only putting money into our account at the end of the year, so M would be equal to 1. And T here is just the number of years. Okay, so let's try a couple examples. So now let's kind of formalize this. So we're, we're still putting in the same $1,000 into our savings account, and we want to know how much money is going to be in, in our account at the end of one year. So we're just looking at year one. And we're still earning that same 6% per annum. So same 6% interest rate. And what we're going to do in this example is we're going to look at some different compounding periods. So compounded annually, this is the one we looked at. So this is an M value of one. And in our discussion, after one year, we saw that our account balance, in this case, was $1,060. All right, so let's, let's try quarterly. Let's look at quarterly. So this means the bank account is going to be putting into our, putting the interest into our account every quarter. So there's 12 months, divide 12 by 4, we get 3. Okay, so this is every three months <clears throat> that we're depositing. And we're going to be putting, so let's try out our account balance here. So let's figure out what our, what our, uh, our balance is. Um, I guess we don't need to figure out how many months. So let's let's write it out, and we're going to do monthly in a in a few seconds here. So we'll hold off on on monthly. Um, so our principal, what is our principal? Well, it's going to be the thousand dollars. The interest rate here is six percent, so we're going to write that as a decimal, so 0 0.06. And T, what is our T value? Well, we're just looking after one year. So we're going to let T equal one. <clears throat> All right, so when we do this, M is going to be the number of times that the bank account is putting money into our account each year. So quarterly means they're going to do that four times during the course of one year. So M is actually going to be four here. Monthly will be a little bit dumb. You know, so this is every three months. We can expect to, to get an interest payment, but it's going to happen four times. So M is represents the number of times they're putting the money into our account. All right, so then once we have these values here, we just kind of plug them in. So our principal is $1,000. We end up with 1 plus our interest rate is 0 0.06. And then we're dividing that into uh, by four. And then in the exponent there, we have four times one. So our interest rate was R. So we replaced that with 0 0.06. The M value was four. So we divided it by four. And then in the exponent there, M was four and T was one. Now, realistically, you need a calculator for this. And if we do calculate that, we end up with $1,061, and I'm cheating, <laughs> K-1. 
calculated this before, and 36 cents. So notice, this is a little bit bigger than if they were to only put it in once a year. So notice if with annual compounding, we end up with 1,060. With quarterly compounding, we end up with a little bit extra. And the reason for that is, if we go back to our diagram from before, is because after that first quarter, we're getting an interest payment put into our account. And what happens is that little interest payment starts to make its own interest. And then after the second quarter, that little interest payment starts to earn its own interest. And then after the third quarter, we end up with another little interest payment <clears throat> and it starts to build. So again, we're only looking at one year here, but even after one year, there is a noticeable difference between annual compounding and quarterly compounding. There's that little bit extra. So that's the compound interest that we're seeing. Um, all right, so let's, let's try one more. So monthly compounding. So here, there's 12 months in a year, so it's gonna happen 12 times they're gonna put money into our account. Our principal is still $1,000. The interest rate is still 6%, which we're still writing as a decimal, and we're still just looking at one year. Okay, so what's our account balance gonna be? Well, the principal, $1,000, times one plus, our interest rate is 0 0.06, and now we're going to divide that by 12. And then we're going to have this raised, 12 raised to the um, raised to the power 12 times 1. All right, so again, to, to actually use this then, we, we need a calculator. Um, and again, I'm going to cheat here because I <laughs> don't remember the decimal off the top. Um, and we end up with... $1,061.68. So again, there's a slight difference. If the money is being put into our account every month, that's why we see this little bit extra here. So the bank is putting a small interest payment in at the end of month one, and that little interest payment has 11 months to start earning its own interest. So that's the difference that we're seeing between these two values is, again, that effect from compound interest. All right, so we're going to see, um, we probably won't do it. If we we're going to do daily, for simplicity, we're just going to assume 365 days. So over the course of, year, uh, of one year, the bank is going to put interest into our account every single day and 365. So this one might be for a good one for you to just try out. Principal is still $1,000. Interest rate is still 0 0.06. And then our T value is still 1. <clears throat> and what we're going to see, and we're going to start this in class, is that as these M values get larger and larger, we kind of approach a limit. There's a, there's a limit to how much this compound interest can have an impact over the course of one year. And to spoil it, it's going to involve E. <laughs> so we'll see that in class. Bye-bye.